Welcome back to a beautiful church podcast. Uh, we have been interviewing people that are in reputable nonprofits around town around town that are very established uh, because we want to get more people aware of them, partnering with them, finding out ways to uh, just sort of align forces to do ministry with them. And today I have a guy who is like completely unfamiliar with microphones and anything to do with media whatsoever. That's not true. That's a terrible lame joke. Uh, My buddy, Justin Wade. Justin, welcome. Thanks. I'm glad to hear we're a reputable nonprofit. Yes, you are. Yeah, you're reputable. And and you're reputable, too, actually, uh, just by uh, association, I think. So don't don't mess this up uh, and 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 uh, ruin that reputation for others. Um, But let's um, let's just sort of start with uh, who you are and who you're representing. And uh, then we'll get some of your story. So, yeah. Give us a brief introduction to yourself. Yeah, my name's Justin Wade. Um, I lead the team at Partners for Christian Media. Which everyone knows that name first off, right off the bat, right? Justin Wade or Partners? Yeah, both. No, Partners. Yeah, they're both pretty That's, not well-known. Um, yeah. So we're most well-known for the brands that we kind of do public ministry with. Uh, J103, JFest, uh, Come On, Let's Go, and J Radio. But yeah. mostly J103 and JFest at this point. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're famous for, uh, although your or your ministry is famous for. And um, so let's start with you. Where who is Justin, and where does he come from? Yeah, and why is he here today? Great question. Um, so um, let's see. Born and raised in Chattanooga area. Um, I'm married. Have been married. Uh, it'll be 20 years this uh, this summer. Congrats. So, yeah, thanks. We're excited about that. Uh, we have two daughters. The first. Uh, our oldest daughter graduates uh, Chattanooga Christian in two weeks. Wow. Actually, same day as JFest. That'll there's a lot going on that day, and then um, then we've got a. Are you able to pull away for that graduation? Have to. Yeah, Amen. wouldn't miss it yes. for anything. Maybe yes, I would not miss it yes. for anything. And then um, who scheduled that on you? We saw it coming. Like okay. you know, there's there's. I mean, don't you kind of aren't you don't you have any influence there as to when the date happens? I think it's the it's the realization when you realize this is way bigger than my personal schedule. Sure, so, sure, yeah. It's they, you know, I like to think they need me over there uh, the day of JFS, but uh, they don't. Apparently not. No, it turns out they don't. Um, let's see, I've got a, a younger daughter uh, that's finishing up her sophomore year of high school. Um, so so that's what's going on. I mean, um. Do you exercise ever? I'm asking that as a totally, I know the answer question. I do. I exercise. Uh, I try to stay pretty active. Uh, not as much as I used to. Like when we first met, I was uh, really, really working out a whole lot, but still six days a week, uh, make it a point to six exercise days. at some point. So you're no, no more triathlons? No, I'm not done triathlons in a, in a few years. Okay. So what do you just, you just run like 10 miles now? Yeah. For real? Oh, for real? Like, if I just go out for the morning, yeah. I try to run five miles. Yeah. That's or I'll ride on a bicycle and, you know, got the just kind of routine. So I'm just kind of a man of routine. Yeah. I'm not too creative. Five miles sounds horrible, day. horrible to me, but, and more than I've, I mean, I've run seven miles like once in my life. I like to think of it as an acquired taste. An acquired taste, yes. Which means it's bad, I think. Like, if, yeah. if you have to acquire it, it, it wasn't. It was bad that, to start with. Yeah. It's like, why, why am I working toward this? Yeah. Well, um, one of the benefits I, I had from doing really long races, I did marathons for a few years and triathlons and stuff, is that all of a sudden to go out and work out for an hour or an hour and a half, it feels like a short workout compared to six, seven hour workouts. Yes. And so it's like, oh man, this is great. And and so your wife, just by, um, you know, being close to all this has to be something of a saint to let you go out and do this on top of all the other things that you do to go train for triathlons and everything else like that when when i was doing triathlons uh specifically the long ones it is a family commitment and um my wife was always so supportive of of that um um now i also had a commitment which is if at all possible i was going to do it while my family was asleep so um like i'll give you an example sundays um usually the long run day for triathlons and so you might go out and run 20 22 miles on sunday morning uh, I would start as early as 3.30 to make sure I could go get my 20 miles in, be home by the time, help wake the kids up, get ready, still go to church. And um, and so I did that. Saturday's long ride usually happens during the day. But uh, even during the week, I woke up at 3.45 or 4 o'clock to do all that, still come home, help get the kids up, get the kids ready. So it didn't. now there were, there were some days where I'm like, I 
can't make it up the stairs to tuck my kids in. Like maybe they'll say goodnight down here. We can pray together because I'm probably not going to make it up the stairs tonight. Every parent says that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, but yeah, it's kind of a family decision. And I think that, uh, uh, they were totally, totally for it. And, uh, you know, my wife says I'm a little, um, uh, active anyway. So by the time I came home, she liked the pace that I was at anyway. Kind of the tire Justin is probably more fun to be around. Than okay. Bouncing off the wall. Driving that crazy. Yeah. So, so you, you didn't need to have a, a son because you were the boy that was running around the house. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. Um, all right. And so give us a little bit of your professional story for how you ended up with Partners for Christian Media. Yeah. Um, let's see. In 2000, and two, I was, I was working at an Italian restaurant, going to college for business and the restaurant that I worked at was, was going, they were closing in like three or four weeks. And a guy, Ted Gokey, the guy that did the morning show at that point on J103 and still does. He who said, likes to credit himself with this story. Yeah. He, yeah. I've he, noticed he doesn't, he's not bashful about it. No, he, he, he got me the job there. He probably regrets it some days, huh? but uh, he said, Hey, what are you going to do when the restaurant closes? I said, I have no idea. And he said, I think we may be hiring at the radio station. Um, do you want me to, you want me to find out? And I said, that sounds great. He called the next day. I had a job interview lined up and, uh, like, honestly, I listened to J103 for the very first time on my way to the job interview. Hey, at least you bothered to listen to it on the way in. Yeah. The, you the, the, the guy goes, uh, what's some of the Christian music that you like? Like I was able to squeak out third day. That was, I didn't know Christian music. I hadn't like, I'm like, oh, I think I've heard third day. I may mean, maybe the youth group kind of event or something. Yeah. And so. Yeah, no. Okay. So props to you because, you know, believe it or not, just, just in case you're out there listening and you don't know that you should have at least listened to the station that you're writing into or looked at the website for the place that you're interviewing with, you you need to do that. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah. That's the, um, that's yeah. maybe maybe an explanation, not an excuse, but yeah, I didn't do a lot of research. I was 19 in college. No, but yeah. you did it. You did it. So you're good. I'm just, I'm oh, just yeah, helping yeah, yeah. those out there that. Yeah, you should do it. At least wouldn't be as smart as you to listen to the radio station yeah. at least 10 minutes before you walk at in. For at least. The yes, yeah. at least. So. What did you interview for then? What was your position that you were going in for? Yeah, my role was to, um, my role, um, this is awesome uh, to even talk about because it doesn't happen anymore. My role was to sit in a studio um, from three o'clock in the afternoon till seven o'clock in the afternoon, record uh, traffic updates from a guy that flew around in a small airplane on a reel to reel machine. And then I would play it back at the appropriate time. That's, that's, that was my, that was basically my first. Roll. Wow. Yep. That's really sounds super exciting. That was ter is terrible. I mean, uh, it is terrible. Like I, I would just sit there and then you do that once every 15 minutes. Yes. And then stare at, and then stare at the wall. Well, this, see, I actually got my undergrad in, you know, communications yep. with emphasis in all the broadcasting, all that stuff, which it's not even really broadcasting in a lot of cases anymore, electronic media, whatever. And, uh, I just remember as I got, you know, this is what happens. You, I, they get you roped in with these generic classes that everybody has to take, but then you start getting into your degree and you're like, I don't actually like this. <laughs> yep. I'm like, this is a terrible, uh, like you, they're, you know, it's, it's like editors for film. Like th we called them the cave trolls, you know, because they just kind of like hung out in those rooms. Those situations, like you have to be okay with being in a, I mean, was it a dark room with no windows? That's the situation I was in with radio. I could, I could see outside. Okay. Uh, did that's, have, that's a plus. I, I did have windows. Uh, listen, this is... Uh, no offense uh, to our radio friends that, that are stuck in this. Yeah, that are stuck in No, I think, I think that's good. There's some people that that's kind of a perfect role. It's part of their calling, yes. Right, but yeah. you, if you're not okay with that, then... Right. Yeah. So um, here's how bored I was, and then I'll try to take the next step of how I got there. Okay. We, we started to get a new computer system. They call it an automation system, like runs all the songs and commercials and stuff. Okay. I was so bored doing this job. I read the manual. It's just like, oh, I mean, it was really a thick, like, that's how bored I was. I read the manual. And totally then, before iPhones. There, well, there was no YouTube. Yeah. There, I couldn't sit there and crush candy or whatever they do now. Right. So, like, I was so bored. I'm like, I mean, I'm going to have to learn this. I might as well read the manual. Yeah. And then nobody could figure out how to use the new system. And so I'll walk down the hall to the, the guy that started the whole ministry and I go, Hey, I, you're having a hard time moving to the new system. 
you, I've got a really boring job and I read the manual. I can, I can do this if you want. No way. That's hilarious. Yep. That was it. That was, that's the, that's the, that was your ticket out of that room. It was just the ticket out of, well, it was the ticket into the room, you know, 14 hours a day till we got on the new system. And then it was the invitation to the table, you know? To, wow. Like maybe, maybe this kid can hang around. Man, there's, uh, there's so many life lessons to be drawn from this, uh, because now you started there in the in the most boring job possible, and now you're uh, you're you're up the the top tier. So, oh, well, uh, in in all fairness, this can be pretty boring. Also, I mean, you probably share your your share of Excel spreadsheets. So, yes, 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 that, that's true. That is true. And there's days where you would rather not be responsible for things that you're you're caught up in. Yeah. How would you like to read this arms contract that's 34 pages long? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds so much fun. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So then let's, let's just sort of switch to uh, Partners for Christian Media. Can you give us a little bit of the background on the organization? Yeah. And just sort of speak to what it's been, where it's at, and how it's gotten to where it's at now. Um, we, we started like as an entity in um, 93. Okay. And as an entity, I mean like a like actual nonprofit that was planning to buy a radio station but didn't have a radio station. Uh, it was 95 before we actually had a staff, had a frequency to go on and all that stuff. So which do you celebrate as your organization's 95. Okay, when we yeah. started when we started broad I mean, because for us, that's when we started ministry. Right. The other stuff was fundraising, it was planning, it was strategic uh, you know, relationships or whatever. But that's when the ministry started. So nineteen ninety five in March. Um next year will be thirty years. Um but uh Bob LaBelle real he he'd had he'd been uh an evangelist. He'd also worked in radio. Uh, had a heart for it. Um, Chattanooga at that time had once had a Christian radio station, but they didn't make it. And so um, um, Chattanooga did not have a Christian radio station. And so when we came on in 1995, it was like, oh, um, sorry, that can be offensive to probably a, a group of people. It didn't have a Christian music radio station. Um, there we go. Yeah. And so there were, there were some stations that would play uh, teaching and talk uh, and things like that. But in terms of Christian music, uh, Chattanooga did not have a Christian music radio station. So uh, we came on in 1995 to be kind of the first Christian music radio station, in, um, which is different. I mean, now there's like five stations that play the same music in Chattanooga. Right. So are they all locally uh, based, though? No. I didn't think so. Right. No, they're, they're, from, they're from other places. So a little bit of background. Radio stations once upon a time were, and this might be earth shattering for some people. I'm, uh, I'm really sorry what, what you're about to hear, but they, they used to be locally based and these personalities were people that were local to your town and you, that you could see them around, et cetera. Right. The industry changed with a lot of the technology advancements and with a lot of downsizes and centralizing, et cetera. And so a lot of your stations are coming out of big, uh, cities, uh, that have hubs and tax structures that make it conducive for them to be there. Right. And so the local, radio station has mostly, is it fair to say mostly gone away or like 50, I don't know what the statistic would be, but they it's decimated the local markets and put them in these big hubs that cast them elsewhere. And we're actually, we have, we have a couple of Christian stations still and a couple, uh, but there, it's not, it's not anything like what it would have used to have been back in the day. So those local personalities are not so local. They're not so close to you. But J103 is. We are, we are, we're, uh, um, we laugh. We we uh we laugh, or they they laugh. They probably feel like they have to laugh. Like I'll call our little our little place by Hamilton Place Mall, uh, the world headquarters. <laughs> this is it, <laughs> world headquarters. We make that, but like, yeah, our our DJs like they drive down the ridge cut. They um uh, we share the same streets. We eat at the same restaurants. We go to the same churches. Yep. And so um from from our standpoint um we're trying to relate to people in our community. Yeah. And so um it's 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 our thought that that's desirable. Um, but it yes, is. there's an economies of scale associated with large form stations. So it's like, Hey, you've got a station in Nashville. You can play that station in 50 different markets for a lot less expensive than going into 50 different markets and hiring a new staff, uh, in every market. Right. Yeah. yeah so that's a lot that happens a lot. now. And to be, to be clear, you guys have not franchised out your station. Right. 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 We, uh, yeah, we have a couple of different frequencies that are all kind of localized. So, um, you know, you may pick us in from Fort Payne, Alabama to Knoxville. Sure. Like south side of Knoxville to maybe like Calhoun, Georgia. Sure. So, but yeah, that uh, Channel 3 is here. You wouldn't really find us anywhere else. 
So, and then even people that listen in Knoxville, they hear us talking about traffic jams in Chattanooga, right? Or like concerts in Chattanooga. But um, yeah, we're we're not franchised out all over the place. And so, I I just want to make that clear. This is a this is a unique, well, not unique. Well, it's unique for Chattanooga. You know, it's a, it's something that uh, is is owned here, so to speak. It's it's not been unique. It's becoming unique. You know, you see yes. a lot of broadcasters that go, it just costs, it costs a lot of money to, um, uh, to broadcast, uh, locally like that. So kind of the, the big boys are gobbling up some of that, um, some of that. Well, I'm not, I'm not a hater, uh, you know, uh, towards those organizations at all. It's just not what we feel like God's called us to. We want to like super serve our market. Yeah. And so let's, let's just speak into that. Let's just make that our segue of how have you a survived? Cause that's a worthwhile question to ask. And then, um, how have you done it to where you've carved out sort of like a, this is, this is our space where we, where we do our life and ministry. Um, I'll say this first and I'll try to tactically answer your question in a minute because I don't want this to feel like just a complete cop out. Um, uh, uh. when we, when we sit down and, sl- and and like back up and think about it, we, we really think it's, uh, God and the Holy spirit guiding. It's not that we're super brilliant and, uh, have it all figured out and we're like the 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 most innovative media group in the world it's that we we um we have talented people and they work hard and um they they have a gift and they work hard and that's important uh, to say but like god's good and we've tried to be faithful to listen to that there's all that to be a cop out but i really feel that way but then i'll answer the the question maybe more directly how you yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's worth, that's worth saying for sure. And, and even, you know, it's not to say that there weren't hardworking people in other stations that were, that closed down there, there are, there's a thing to the sovereignty of God where yes. we are here be in spite of ourselves. And because we know that God wants us to be here, which actually drives us to do what it is that we're doing, because we know this wouldn't have, uh, it, we wouldn't have survived by our wits alone. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good testament to that. The, um, I mean, I wasn't making it a dig at No, you. that's I mean, all right. I, this, I can see where that's going. I figure I might as well say it myself. Uh, so one of the uniquenesses to us, which, which, um, a lot of people have questions about, um, um, is that Bob, our founder, um, l- watched Christian radio stations that were commercial Christian radio stations that had a lot of funding and a lot of support like that on uh, come on the radio and they couldn't sell enough commercial advertising to stay in business. They went out. Um, he also had been kind of around the media industry long enough to see listener supported radio come up, get some support, but ultimately not have enough support to stay around. And so um, uniquely uh, Bob, found radio frequencies that were on the commercial band. So, um, sorry, I'll bore you to pieces for a second now. Anything above 90 on the FM frequency is a commercial frequency, meaning you can run commercials on it. Anything below 90 on the FM band is non-commercial. It is set aside by the FCC as educational frequencies. A lot of Christian broadcasters have taken those over, um, I'll, 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 I'll poke just a little bit here. No, I might even jump in when we will, we'll, let's be boring together. They've, they've done that. They've done that and said, we're going to put our Christian radio station on here. And then they say, here's how this is educational. They have an educational component to an internship program, a training program, all that. So I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but they bought frequencies. They're not competing with cumuluses and iHeart radios and intercoms to buy these commercial frequencies because there's that's what colleges used to own until colleges all got rid, of, got rid of the radio stations, right? So Christian broadcasters do that some. Then they have share fonts. People call in, donate money, things yeah. like that. Um, Bob, after seeing commercial stations have a hard time staying funded and listener supported stations be funded, he goes like, what if we could do some of both? And so we started on commercial frequencies as a nonprofit. This totally stresses some people out, but it shouldn't. It's actually a really creative idea. But like we think of it as we're community supported. And community support for us means some businesses support us and some individuals and families support us. And so like the combination of those two has been uh, the financial model that's kind of funded J103 all along. And really from a commercial side, every once in a while you get somebody that's like, hey, you know, KZ 106 or Rock 105 doesn't have share-a-thons. It, no, 
but there are a lot of advertisers that we have to pass on because of our convictions. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't think we have to get into detail about that, but yes, tell us the advertisers that you think are so immoral. You aren't. No, I'm just kidding. Well, we stay. We stay. We stay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was just teasing. I'm totally. I'm like, well, I mean, I can go there. Let's go right in people's faces right now. Now, um, so we turn some advertisers down to make sure we feel good about sending our people there. We have an advertising right. sales team that goes out, and I tell them like, when you go into a place, if you wouldn't feel good about your wife, uh, sister, daughter doing business there, walk out. We want to send our listeners to, to, there are plenty of wonderful businesses in our area that we'd love to send people to. And that's who we try to focus on. And, um, and so there's a little bit of a, um, we've put our, our stamp on, if, if they're hearing it on your station, then there's, there's not, you're not making a personal guarantee that everything will go perfectly there, but you've at least done a little bit of vetting of those. Right. We feel like you have a good experience there. Yeah. We're not saying that, 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 that they're all, they're all, you know, at church four times a week and. Uh, you know, have perfect theology and all this stuff. That is the standard, like, by the way. Four times a week. Yeah, no, That's I'm the- just, just joking. <laughs> four times a year. Uh, yeah, just getting that way with some. Um, so, so that's it. Actually, um, that's becoming in 1995. Bob was really, um, kind of a leader in that. Uh, yeah, we're about best I can remember about 12 or 13 stations across the whole country doing something like that. Now that's a lot more common. Um, to come out and do that, and like really the. The, the donors, the people that partner with us financially as individuals, um, turns out most of them actually appreciate that. Like, we're doing what we can to yes. fund. what, And so um, for the radio ministry specifically, about half of the funds come from corporate sponsorships and about half of it come from, like, individuals donating. So I think that's one of the really clever ways that Bob started this thing where it kind of lasted a long time. And then, again, maybe, maybe uh, I'll keep working to not bore you to pieces. 2008, 2008, there was a recession and things got really tight. I mean, um, our advertising sales way down, uh, the people standing up saying, no, we want this station strong and thriving stepped up. And so like we've had other times where we've seen individual partners come down and we've been able to step up with our corporate sponsorships and make it that way. Uh, COVID hit and I mean, just about overnight, we lost half of our advertising dollars. And uh, individuals stood up, said, let's keep this thing going. Let's make sure ministry still happen in, in this kind of Christian music way. Yeah. So it's been really neat to see. Like, it's been a little bit more like if one's up, the other's down. And if one's down, the other's kind of up. Over the 30 years we've been doing it, just like we just kind of look at it as, as God's provision. Wow. No, and uh, multiple revenue streams are excellent. And it's just, you know, it does sound like the community has uh, ownership of of the whole thing. So... Um, let's, you know, speak a little bit toward, um, other properties of partners in Christian media, just so that we're not only focusing on that. Let's save J-Fest for a minute, because J-Fest is obviously a big one, but, um, speak to the other ones that are maybe lesser known, but we should be getting the word out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the others is, come on, let's go. And so, come on, let's go was kind of birthed from this idea that, that, um, advertising is really powerful probably in some ways more powerful than it should be. But it's really powerful, really effective. And um, so are people's personal testimonies and like how God's worked in their lives. So what if we could kind of combine those two? And so that's really, that's really um, what, that, what that came from. Could we combine the power of advertising and the power of the personal testimony um, to, to reach people that might not otherwise be hearing cool things that, that Christ is doing in, in the lives of people. And so basically we, we film people's stories and uh, we try to cut them down to about three to five minutes um, and put them on YouTube and distribute them that way. Um, um, so like, Hey, you're not going to go to church, but you're going to sit on your phone all day. We'd love for you to, or and I don't even mean that in a bad way, but we'd love to show you a testimony and you go like, wow, I've not heard that before. And, um, um, so that's what we do there. We, we basically release a new story every two weeks. Um, we've been doing this for a number of years. At this point, we have about 500 stories, um, that we've filmed, edited and distributed that way. Um, we, we also, I mean, we're constantly in conversation about like, um, how do we, how do we not just go wide with something like this, but how do we go deep, which is really hard online. Right. Um, 
Yes. Um, but you know, like we'll have, you know, last, last year we had about 6 million views of these stories. Um, we averaged a little over 900 people a month while watching these stories, clicking a button that says, I want to find peace with God chat now. Um, um, from that point they can, um, they can chat or text with somebody from a partnership we have with an organization called Need Him. They can watch more videos of like people's uh, encounters with Christ, or they can kind of like look into different resources and, and things like that. Um, but but we're always kind of looking and trying to figure out how do we, okay, should should we try to get the same person to watch four stories in a three-week period? And all of a sudden that's more meaningful than one random story it kind of pops up, but uh, we really feel like uh, we really feel like there's power in in these stories and like getting six million stories out. Um, last year, we feel like just scratching the surface, right? And so um, uh, we try to figure out how do we do that. But ultimately, we're trying to kind of go if if people aren't going to church as much as they used to, and a lot of Christians, um, best we can tell, about nine out of ten Christians aren't really comfortable sharing their faith, so they just kind of don't um that that we're going how do we take the gospel to them and it made us go well if we're going to take the gospel to them we have to go well where are they and so um sometimes we go well we take it to the world's largest mission field yeah which is online the roman roads of today oh my goodness i mean um kind of scary but that's where they are yes so um uh so so that's so that's what we do from from that standpoint uh we try to share um, basically, a, you know, a message of hope and encouragement to the, what we think is the lost and broken all along. It's like, I don't know if you spend much time on YouTube, but if you go read the comments on any YouTube channel, you will see the kind of, uh, you will see where they are. You see where people are in life. Um, you can go read comments on some of our videos and it's like, oh my, you know, this is, uh, uh, uh an unfiltered, uh, anonymous world of internet commenting is, uh, it's an ugly place. But let me tell you, we, we, there yeah. there are some comments. And some are beautiful, yeah. So there, there are some comments, and I just, I, don't want, I want to put a bow on it. Uh, yeah. There are some comments um, that go, that, that'll that pop on and go like, I always, so a lot of our, our, our stories are delivered through advertising, right? So you're forced to watch six seconds of it, and then you can hit skip. Um, uh, here, let's just play a little game. What percentage of you, people do you think don't hit skip and continue to watch our ads that are skippable? Hmm. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say 1% don't skip it. And that's still a whole lot of people. 1% don't skip dude. Um, most, most ad agencies would say if we can get 30% of the people to not skip it, keep watching it, we're doing pretty good. We ride around 70%. That's crazy. Yes. Like, I, that, so I guess you're telling me there are people that actually watch these. I'm like, does anyone not press skip? Maybe is that just me? Am I? No, I skip I, on. Doesn't YouTube, everybody I skip, skip commercials all the yeah, time? Yeah, I thought everyone skipped. In in, in I, I could email you seventy percent. Seventy percent don't skip. It's because you've got it is something compelling, and that must just be the Lord. I there's it, I don't know. I think it's the I think it I think it is confusing. So they're expecting a Geico commercial or a Dorito like a super cool Dorito commercial or something, and all of a sudden here's like a random you know, gentlemen or lady share, you know, sharing their story. Um, I think it's the Holy spirit. I do think our team does a good job of making the first six seconds compelling. Yes. They're like, well, what happens to this guy? What's going on? But, um, so dude, they're watch actually watching these stories, but the comments are crazy. Like I always hit the skip button and I didn't hit skip on this ad. And it's the best decision I ever made. Oh, That's wow. literally one comment we got. Okay. It's the best decision I ever made. I'm also glad he's, that guy's affirming me that uh, I always skip. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I do, I do too. I do yeah. too. But, um, you know, I guess. No, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, so yeah, we, we, we get, we get the, um, some amazing stories of like, wow. Um, uh, Roger Haley. I don't know if you've had him on a podcast, but he, Roger Haley. Us. Um, yeah. Um, uh, that's say his name wrong. Yeah, Roger Helly. Helly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but his story has... Uh, yes, 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 yes. Have you seen that one? Yes. So he's got a... He's got a cra yes, that's a crazy story. It's an amazing story. It's an awesome story, but some of the comments on that are, I'm not a religious person, but this is an awesome man. And um, wow, um, 
I've, I've been a Christian for years and like this really encouraged me to work through some forgiveness situations on my own. So like the amount of, comp- but now we get the, this is crazy Christian propaganda and I can't believe YouTube allows this kind of comments right. also. But um, there are people uh, that come on there and we do get some of that feedback that goes like, wow, this is um, actually reaching people at an interesting time. Now, where do you get the stories for this? How do you hunt down? You get said you have 500 stories, right? Yes. Where did you, where do you find these? Yeah. Um, um, mostly just referrals. So I've uh, got a crazy testimony. You should hear this or my friend's got a crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it all started with pastors. So we just like, we know some pastors because we've been in ministry for a long time and we go, Hey, do you know somebody in your congregation that's got a cool story they'd be willing to share? And so then they're like, Oh man, you got to meet Susie. And um, so we talked to we talked to a lot of people, and then have to try to pare it down to right uh, a smaller number that we actually can film and produce and all that. You don't uh, have like an American Idol type audition thing. <laughs> it's not it's not that uh, it's not that impressive. Um, so then then we do it that way. But I mean, we've really had like random random person post something on Facebook like here's a cool like really long article or blog about how Christ worked in their life. And somebody on our team will just go, that's a cool story. We'll send them a message and go, hey, would you want to come to Chattanooga and film that story? And so we've, we've done it that way. Cool. Like um, we've showed up at some like alpha conferences and stuff like that and just filmed 10 or 15 in a single day. Yeah. So there's just little weird ways uh, that we've that we've kind of uh, kind of just got different stories. But most frequently, it is just talking to Christians that we know that go like, do you know somebody with a cool story that, that they're willing to share? And, and and we do it. And let's say someone's listening and they're uh, they're wanting to go watch these, not just popping up randomly as an ad. Yeah. Where can they go find those? Yeah, come on, let's go dot com. Yeah, come on, let's go dot com would be a perfect place to go and um, just w- w- uh, watch a handful of stories. They're they're designed. I mean, our purpose in this uh, is very clear, which is to take these stories to people that that aren't hearing the gospel. Right. We feel like a lot of Americans are not hearing the gospel anymore. And our goal with these is to get these stories in front of people that aren't hearing the gospel. But there's this second thing, which is they're really encouraging for Christians. Right. And um, uh, I kind of sometimes say like, oh, you're preaching to the choir. Listen, the, the choir needs to be preached to. Yes, they get discouraged. In, in, not, in, not in a hateful manner or whatever. And in some ways, the choir's leaving the church. But, um, but like the choir gets discouraged. The choir has a tough day at the office. The choir's going through stuff. And to see cool things, like, read through scripture and to see the amazing things that happen, but like amazing things are happening today too. And I think it's awesome to talk about those also. Yes. So I think it's encouraging for Christians. I watch them. I went through like a period where every single day I started my day, um, watching one of our stories and it was great. Like I, I, I lead the organization and I was like three weeks in going, I've never seen this video or maybe I saw it seven years ago and I just forgot. I don't know. But yeah, that happens more. Well, once you get past 40, it's just, <laughs> you know. yeah. Yeah. I'm 41. So at this point I just rewatch them all every quarter. It's like, this is oh, so it's new and great. Uh, I look, I, I haven't done this once on this show, but I, I am married to a woman who can almost watch. She, she might hurt me later for uh, saying this. Um, she'll, she'll watch a movie. And she'll be like three months later, literally it's only happened one time, but literally it was three months later. She's like, we should see this movie. And I'm like, <laughs> it's such a gift that you can just rewatch this over and over. And it's, it's new to you every time. I, I fell yeah. asleep during movies. Oh, you're one of those. And yeah. so, uh, I can watch it and, it, and, uh, because I fall asleep and, and a show finishes, it might take me like several nights to, to finish a show. Yeah. We're, we're so, different here. So then my, my wife will sit there and go, you know, uh, this is about to happen. And I'm like, well, honey, how did you know that? She's so good at predicting shows. She's like, Justin, I watched it last night while you slept on the couch. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. It's one of the beauties of waking up early. It's like, if I slow down, man, you're, I'll do this. You're out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, other ministries that you guys do. Yeah. Let's uh, keep going. J Radio. Um, uh, J Radio is kind of our answer to people listening to music in different ways. Yep. So, um, so, People listen to music so many different ways than they did in 1995, and so we're we're excited to super serve the FM audience that's uh, in Chattanooga that way. But people are listening to music differently now, and so um, we wanted to build something that would kind of scratch that itch of some of the online standards. You know, you could skip some songs, you can kind of choose your own adventure, 
in some ways you're in the driver's seat. Um, um, and I don't want to, I don't want to bad mouth any of the, any of the, um, um, big organizations out there, but Christian radio by and large has, has done a handful of things well. And that is, uh, include personalities, build community and have trust. And so, um, Dude, I got to tell you, I got to tell you a crazy uh, thing that that I'll try to bring back in a minute. Um, in the late '90s, there was a nationwide research project done of Christian radio listeners. Twenty eight percent of the people that that listen to Christian radio do not consider themselves born again Christians. And so you go like, why are they listening to Christian radio if they're like they don't even have a common set of beliefs? What's going on? And um, and when when the next question was asked, which is why do you ask? Is it, they go because I've got these kids in the back seat, and the other stations do X, Y, and Z, and don't. I don't have to worry about what you say, right? Basically, and so um, I don't have to worry about what's going to play. Is not something that we'd use to describe some of the big behemoth streaming platforms that are out there now. And so uh, we're basically um, building um, a response to that a music streaming service that can be built around trust. That it's. Uh, there are humans involved. It's not just algorithms based on beats without consciences to decide right. what's okay and not okay for, I mean, and you're, you're, you're 40 years old. You can decide what's okay for you to listen to. Um, as a convenience, some people go cool. If you can kind of curate some of that for me, that'd be great. But, um, like my guess is you just don't want to hand your kids an open internet device right. and just let them listen to everything that's out there, let alone be pulled into that stuff or encouraged into that stuff. So uh, that's what J Radio is. It's kind of a um, Christian and positive music streaming platform for people that want to listen uh, to music online. And if they want to do that, how do they do that? Uh, J Radio the dot com. They can. I mean, they can do the apps if they're doing it that way. If they want to listen on a computer, they can do. Uh, uh, they can do it that way. Okay. And then uh, we're we're to J Fest now, right? Okay. Yeah. J Fest. Okay. So let's let's talk about J Fest. That's another that's another biggie. And and one of the benefits of having a local radio station, right? Yeah, JFest would not be here if, you yeah, would, right, yeah, right, yeah. If you're, if you're not in Chattanooga, it's hard to do concert. I, don't, I guess people do concerts in different markets, but yeah, there, we don't have any. We don't have. I don't. There's no national Christian radio stations doing concerts in Chattanooga. Right. There are sometimes concerts that are happening because of other people that they'll show up at and kind of say hey to people, which is cool. But um, yeah, since we're here, it's a Chattanooga, community of listeners that are out there. Yeah. So, JFest started off. Um, JFest has a unique little story. Uh, it started so summer's kind of slow in um, radio station ad sales and donations. So when we first start, we started the radio ministry in '95. JFest started in '98, and when JFest started, it was a fundraiser. Like the whole point and purpose of JFest was to raise money during a slow time. Maybe we could sell some tickets. Maybe we could sell some t-shirts or some popcorn or, you know, some uh, hot dogs or, um, um, that's what it was. And I mean, we're, 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 we're not at all embarrassed about that. That's where it started. We're trying to fund a ministry. Look, it's, I think it's better than a golf tournament. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to all the other yeah. uh, nonprofits out there. Yeah. We, we weren't, we weren't witty enough to, to do a 5k. So we did a Christian music festival. I mean, yeah, which is you know they, this was because it was before you 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 might have inspired them to run, but this is before they hired a guy. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, uh, long story short, what we thought was a concert or a music festival to bring in money to fund a radio station ended up being this ministry event in and of itself for sure. And so uh, um, not too far down the road, we're going, oh my goodness, this is not. First of all, it, it <laughs> it's not a fundraiser. Like there's something that you're looking for um, in a fundraiser, and that is that it raises funds. Yes, that's kind of one of the objectives. Yeah, and uh, and if and if the goal is to you know, it, it takes a lot to pull off an event like JFest, um, yes. financial commitment standpoint, and the staff time and energy. Oh my goodness, yes. everything costs. Of you want to bring out like speakers and uh, artists, and there's no infrastructure outside for something like that. So we've got to bring it all in and. Um, so, uh, yeah, not only, uh, uh, God used it to help fund our ministry, uh, um, uh, for sure, but I'm just saying we found out that it was a ministry event that, that, um, that we needed to bring to Chattanooga way more than it was a fundraiser. Right. And so, um, uh, so yeah, so that, I mean, that's what it is for, for, I mean, 
see, we had to stop a couple of years because of COVID, but I mean, at this point, this is the 24th J Fest that we've done happens in two weeks. Okay. And so, uh, we're super pumped to, to bring it to Chattanooga and, and just speak to the heart of the event for somebody's, yeah, you know, lame like me and doesn't always get out to concerts unless they're involved in, yeah, you, you know, you I, I have I, to for a work group. Get, yeah. Well, I just, yeah. So just speak to that a little bit of what, what, what happens at J Fest? What's it like kind of thing there? Yeah. So I have been for the record. I just, yeah. <laughs> um, J Fest is, it's an opportunity for people from all walks of life, all different denominations, all different places to come together, enjoy Christian music together, worship together, uh, spend time with their families, um, together. And, and, uh, that's a big deal for, for us. I, we feel like there's a lot of division in the church. We feels like there's a lot of, oh my goodness, they do this and we do that. And, and, and we can't seem to come. I mean, I, actually one of the things I really love about your organization is you pull churches together. You don't wedge them apart, but, uh, we feel like J Fest is an event to do that. It's a great uh, community event. Yeah. And, uh, it's got that uh, quality to it. That's it. Um, and funnel cakes. And funnel cakes. It's very important. Yes. And yes. everything like that. And funnel cakes. And families come together around funnel cakes. Funnel cakes make everything a little better. Yes. Yeah, I mean, except for a straw or I'm not sure. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Um, you have to go on a run. Right. You got to go on a run pretty quick. Um, the other thing is, I mean, we've never, and I'll gladly say this on the podcast, we've never turned anybody away because they couldn't afford a ticket to JFest. Um, mm. If anybody shows up and goes, Hey, things are just tight. I'd love to take my family to J-Fest. Uh, cool. We'd love for you to come to J-Fest. Um, we do sell wristbands to J-Fest to try to help offset the expense it takes to uh, put on an event like this. But our heart is not, um, ooh, how much can we charge people to come? And I mean, now sometimes people call and go, oh my goodness, what do you do with all the money? Just put it in a big pile and uh, how, do you, how do you sleep at not charging people to come to a concert? But uh, that's not the heart of J-Fest. Um, um, so for the people that can buy tickets, we appreciate them buying tickets to come in. But if anybody... Uh, we so have, much work to pull off an event like that with well, so many people uh, working, even volunteers working. It yes, costs a ton to pull it that is. Kind of a thing off. But I'm just telling you, we get phone calls from people that go, hey, I work with some young people and I'd love to take 30 kids and money's an issue. And we go, well, it's not an issue for us. Come on in, we'll mail you tickets. Like, that's the heart of it. We just want everybody to come out and... Um, uh, and do we we have a uh, quite a range of artists? I mean, I think we've got nine artists this year, so it's like eleven in the morning or something like that till probably ten at night. Um, we have fireworks at the end. I don't know why we have fireworks at the end, but apparently at the end of an event, you're supposed to shoot fireworks. I think here. that's right. I think that's so. Right. Uh, we shoot fireworks at the end because that's that's what you do. You do, yeah. That way, everybody knows they can leave. If you shoot fireworks, it's like, we even the last couple of years we had an after party, which is a band after the fireworks. We shoot the fireworks, they leave, and then a band starts, and it's like, well, that didn't really work. Yeah, you, but yeah, I think feel like you did that wrong. Yeah, so. yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we. But you've you've repented of the after party thing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Fire and they, you know, what I do with that not, this year. Yeah, okay. Yes, <laughs> that's that's funny. But yeah, that's the heart of J Fest, man, is to come together and um, and just have an awesome day for people from all over the place. And oh, Adam, we've got we've got people there that are two and three years old. Yep. Uh, in, in the bouncing houses and playing around and we have people that are in their 70s that are absolutely just loving it like some of the photos from JFUS just all ages all walks live it, you know and people are dedicated when I you know I was there a uh, year it was raining uh, it was pouring and nobody's going I mean they're still I just it did not become like a a, a mud slinging party or something like that but it, <laughs> it, it, it stayed uh, what was that was that I don't know, Woodstock that they got that. The, yeah, yeah. Which I know you aren't Woodstock in many ways, but they weren't Woodstock in the, with the mud either. Yes. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. Our audience is, uh, it's surprising how not similar we are to Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not so then, and not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's, so let me just, if, if somebody's wanting to get involved in any of these aspects of ministry, are there ways for even, uh, pastors to besides like a here's a testimony for come on let's go you know are there ways for people to get involved with your ministry and uh, any aspect of this ministry and how would they do that if they wanted to yeah th that's great and I, th then maybe jump back in and, and and let me say this i don't want to exclude the come on let's go like i've got somebody i've got a story myself where i have somebody in my congregation that has a story yeah i mean um we've had storytellers come in and um and go i'm pretty aggressive in sharing my god story 
And by pretty aggressive, I mean, I'll do it three or four times a week, which I think is aggressive. And I'm like, man, if you do it four times a week, that's like 200 people in a year that get to hear your God story. That's pretty cool. But like, if we film the story and put it out there, some, some of these stories will have like 30 or 40,000 views in the first week. Yeah. And so I uh, don't want to diminish the idea that like, if you've got somebody in your congregation that has a story to tell, we'd love to, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. And uh, at least have a conversation with them and see, hey, is this something that, that, um, uh, sure we could do. So yeah, if you have a, if you have a story like that, um, it takes about 300 volunteers to pull off JFest. Uh, not surprising. Churches are really involved in JFest. We've got a church group that sponsors the welcoming group. We have a church out of Chatsworth that says, hey, you know what? We're going to come take care of all the trash. When the trash needs to be picked up and a new bag put in the trash can and somebody takes it to a dumpster, our church is going to do that. We've got another church that takes care of Kids World. So we have churches that kind of come on and like sponsor a little area. And, and it is a ministry. Uh, there are, you know, what there, I was amazed at how many, I mean, there's, I guess I'm not amazed, but I shouldn't be, but there were so many youth groups there. And, you know, there were yeah. some kids that were like, clearly the youth pastor has in mind, I'm exposing this kid to Christian music, Christian culture, that yeah. sort of thing. And he, and doing it on purpose kind of a thing. This, this kid doesn't look like this kid's walking with Christ right now. Right. It just kind of stood out that way. But, uh, there's, so there's lots of that, those kinds of things happening. Yeah. So when people are signing up to volunteer, this is not just, they're just having a festival. Right. Oh, you yeah. know, it's a ministry. Yeah. Yeah. But my sister called me a couple of years ago and like, we've kind of heard this stuff and hope for it and know what happens. But my, my sister called and she goes, um, um, Nathan, which is her husband, Nathan and I have some friends and, um, we've invited them. They don't, they're not believers. They don't go to church. We've invited them to come to church with us a handful of times. They're super respectful, but like, it's just kind of not happening. And, uh, and then we go, Hey, we're going to JFest. Do you want to go with us? Ding. And they're like, yeah, we'll go. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're kind of exposed. And so like people that are, won't accept an invitation to come to church yes. or won't, ex won't jump into a, you know, a four hour theological conversation to somebody with somebody like Adam, they'll go like, Hey, Christian music in the park or just music in the park. Sure. I'll give that a shot. So there's, there's a, there's. That story happens a lot. Youth pastors for sure do that. And and I let you, okay, you're 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 hitting one of my uh, I don't know what the, the places where I have to talk a little bit more. There, this is like, um, you know, we we had a Christian culture where people used to accept and invite to church, and it's still the best way to get someone to come to church with you. But like yes. one of the things that I try to do in my church is like, hey, let's do these like if if we're gonna hold a. Um, like a fall festival or a fall outing with like the bounce houses or whatnot, make people come inside to use the restrooms. I said, I know that might sound silly, but have a few games inside the fellowship hall. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get people in the door of the church to get them used to it because, um, it, it sounds like a, um, uh, it sounds crazy to say this, but people are, are kind of nervous about going inside the walls of a church. And I, you know, I actually took this from, I went to a, you know, a, a Greek festival, at, a, at an Orthodox, Greek Orthodox church, and they had church tours. And I'm a church nerd, so I wanted to go. Yeah. But I, I was amazed, like, there's all these people that are at this Greek festival that they just want to hear about this, you know, let's see about the, what's inside this church. And so the guy, the you know, the priest is there, and he's sort of giving an explanation of Orthodoxy and everything else like that, and he's pointing things out to people and sharing a little bit of gospel, kind of good news stuff, that, just enough to be enticing to people. Right. Um, and then, you know, side, side, uh, with that or pair with that, sorry, uh, at least 51% of the Orthodox church in America now is converts. So they're doing these things to sort of expose people yeah. to, uh, their culture and everything just to get them in the door where I'm like, yeah, most people wouldn't walk in the door of that church. They wouldn't walk in the door of this church, but those, those things that you do to sort of, uh, you know, chip away at people's resistance to coming to a Christian, anything, right. Uh, is big. So something like this of like, Okay, you can't get someone to come to church with you. This is the first stop um, because I, I mean I can even say this. I had someone that came to a a, a special service um, recently with me that wouldn't have come to a Sunday service. Uh -huh. But I will. I will. I haven't yet. Um, but I have plans to at the right moment invite this person to come to normal church. Sure. Um, and uh, I have another testimony of someone that came to a similar 
service that is coming to church regularly now. So this, all I'm trying to say is like, this actually works, people. Right, Be mindful yeah. that people have to come from like point you know, they don't go A to Z, they go to A to B to C. And so just be mindful, this might be B or C along the journey of somebody that you're praying for. Right. And it's a great opportunity for evangelism. Okay, let's right. get off my soapbox yep. now. And, yep. and remember that this interview is... Yeah, we do. In, in, in the, uh, That's the, encouraging though. Outside of your, anyone's personal opinion on Christian music, right? Maybe it's your thing, maybe it's not your thing. There is absolutely truth being shared from that stage biblical truths. Um, we do have a time in the evening where we do very clearly present the gospel in, um, um, not only in the songs, but in between the songs, right. There's a lot of ministry happening from the stage. There's prayer teams there too. Dude, you guys help with the prayer I know, teams. I know, I know. And it's, it's, it's a huge blessing to yep. us. And, uh, we really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, people will just say, yeah, I wasn't even going to try to do like a, I'm just saying there, there's people that will pray over people there. Yeah. That have volunteered that, you know, um, Right, there are bouncing houses and funnel cakes, but it's not just bouncing houses and funnel cakes. Yes, yes, uh, you, but but funnel cakes are a great way to lure people in. I mean, I right. just personal <laughs> they personal are. experience there. <laughs> they re they really are. I mean, if there were more churches with ice cream trucks, like look, might. I know a, I know a pastor who uh, he said he has grown his church um by having he said the, I, we hadn't we just didn't have much community going and so he said i bought an one of those shaved ice machines oh yeah and he said uh he says i'm shameless it's shameless because i'm just <laughs> giving them sugar but they're staying afterwards and socializing a ton and it has helped grow our church rapidly i was like okay you know and that's that's what innovation's like i i, I respect the sugar addiction is real Using that for the gospel, I mean, okay, you know, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> They're probably already addicted to the sugar. Probably, yeah. Yes, just support. He's, he's just continuing. He's just here, yeah. yeah, warming them up on their way out to where they're going for lunch on Sunday. Let me let me toss this out and. Um, but people are getting involved. We're still. That's what yeah, I'm still. Yeah, asking I'm trying about. to come back to that. People getting involved. So uh, um, there's a possibility. I'll regret this, but prob probably not. Um, one of our core values is to support other ministries in this area. You do a great job of that. Um, um, I will vouch. We 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 try to. I think sometimes we do it well. Sometimes we fall short, but we try to support other ministries. So um, perhaps um, if you're at a church, if you're if you're at a nonprofit uh, ministry, and you go, here's a way that that we think Channel Three could help. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, um, this is why I may regret it because everybody goes, sweet. Justin said there's free ads on Channel Three. We can't help. I mean, like we get so many requests, we can't help everyone. But please let us know about it. Like we we set aside a certain amount of like uh, time, energy, and effort, and airtime on January three to go. Here's how we can support other ministries in the area. And and if you got something cool going on, let us know. Um, we offer we offer advertising grants to people just to try to go. I mean, like you know, years ago, years ago, uh, Habitat for Humanity was um, building a house, and we're like, hey. So we, they ask if we could help. We're like, yeah, I mean, I guess we could help. We got the staff together and go, hey, anybody wants to come swing a hammer on this house? Can we have like three people show up? We worked really hard on this house. And then we sat down and we go, we can still go swing a hammer and we probably should. But maybe the best thing we can do is tell our audience that there's an opportunity to come do this. Like maybe, maybe. I relate to this story personally. That's the, the best thing I feel thing seen, that we can do. seen or attacked. I'm not sure. <laughs> and um, um, so perhaps uh, you run a ministry in this area and, and there'd be a way that we could be blessing to you. I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, uh, you know, yeah, you could email me or call and, um, and let's see, but if there's, if there's one thing I'd like people to know, it's the, like we, one of the three main objectives that we have every single year is how do we, how do we support other ministries? And then, and then, um, um, maybe a lot of people don't know that. So, no, that's, uh, that's a good, very broad brushstroke invitation. So uh, I think that's cool. So let's, uh, I just have a few more uh, questions. So what's just big, quickly, big challenges that you guys are facing right now as an organization? What's the, what are some of the biggest challenges that people can be praying about for you? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, people listen to radio, people listen to music in such a big way right now, such a different ways than they used to. And so it, it's create it creates a big obstacle or um, uh, for organizations to basically, I don't know, everybody kind of is dealing with this 
uh, constantly changing world like, that we live in. Now. Yeah, but um, but our world of music distribution is changing pretty quickly. So that's a big challenge that we uh, that we handle and deal with. Um, uh, but ra- radio is still like, like in spite of all odds. I mean, they were what was it twenty years ago? People were pronouncing radios doomed and dead. Yeah, and it still it was just yeah, like missed trucking over everybody as number one. Right. Yeah, I mean, like right now, the numbers are like ninety three percent of Americans listen to FM radio every week. Right. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's still pretty strong. King of the car. That's the the, that's the um um, but ever changing environment. Um, nonetheless, um, we one of the unique obstacles we deal with sometimes is like we'll do these cool videos. Um, we'll do these cool videos for come on, let's go put them up there, and uh, YouTube will take them down and go. You said that this guy um, stopped a substance abuse problem because they met Jesus. And you can't prove that. And so you can't run the video. And they're like, oh, well, we thought this would be a really cool video to encourage people. And so we've got a couple of obstacles um, 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 with things like that that I'd love for people to pray with us uh, through. So um, there's little kind of censorship, you know, like Christian censorship yep. things that we deal with. And I'm not talking about every video we put out. Most of them go through no problem, but uh, a couple times a year, it's like, oh, uh, they don't they they're, they're they don't like why we say this or Interesting. Say this or some of that stuff. Uh, you can't prove that Jesus fixed there. Do you think that's just the ones they're catching, or <laughs> or uh, just actually we won't we won't even say it right now? Yeah, I don't know. I really I really don't know. Uh, their community gu- guidelines change and update, yep. and um and there there are things like that. So um. Um, I really, I, it's hard to say. Okay. So, um, yeah, that'd be it. I mean, as yeah, I don't know. That's, that's maybe, yeah, that's probably a couple of big obstacles. Those are, those are, those are good, good hurdles to speak of. Okay. And then, um, if, if you could sort of, um, as a person in Christian media or just from what you've seen as the lay of the land in Chattanooga, what would be like something you would want to leave us with as far as like uh, a hope you have for our city? That's, that's a, that's a good, deep question. Um, uh, so being a Christian media company, I think it's interesting because a lot of media, like if you look at a lot, if you just went and interviewed a hundred people in Chattanooga and you talked to them about media, their comments would be generally negative. Yeah. Um, Oh my goodness! It's 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 doom and gloom. Our, like our slogan is hope and encouragement, and um um, and there's so many people that just they the amount of media that they consume that takes them to a negative spot. It's difficult. It's hard. They don't realize that uh, like there are media organizations that are engineering things to like give you a dopamine hit. All these. Mm, Yes. Neurological benefits for continuing to come back or stay on five more minutes or do all this stuff that like as, as, as maybe the media guy in here, I'd go, my hope is that we go back to real relationships, looking at people face to face, having conversations with humans in real time, um, that when you are exposed to media, like, let's just expose ourselves to good media. Um, uh, like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just a dad over here, but like garbage in, garbage out. And, 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 um, you ain't kidding. Maybe, and I'm, that's not the shameless plug to listen. So listen to Channel 3 more, <laughs> but you could. But, um, but even if you don't want to, like, at I'll, least be discerning with my them. hope is Chattanooga as a whole puts our guard up because, like, the media influence on our anxiety, on our children, on the way we perceive life, on our joy and peace, um, like, it's a really, really big deal. And, uh, so I, that would be my hope is that we go, can we, can we, my hope is that the people of Chattanooga have a healthy relationship with media. That is an absolutely phenomenal prayer and hope. So you heard that, pray into that, hear that. Um, and Justin, thank you for being on the show today. Fabulous interview, uh, very encouraging and such a good vision to give us right there at the end. Dude, thanks for, thanks for letting me come hang out.
Hey everybody, just wanted to let you know about our website, PrayChattanooga.com. If you visit, you'll find all sorts of resources that will help you develop a stronger prayer life. For pastors and ministry leaders, we have prayer networks that meet all across town from Lafayette to north of Saudi Daisy. We have prayer resources that help you learn more about prayer and deepen your prayer life. And we have retreats that are happening here all the time. You can come for a custom retreat or you can come for one of the ones that we host. You'll find all of that again on our website, PrayChattanooga.com.